Hey y'all, it's JB. How are you? It's good to be back with you. As you've probably noticed, this is audio only. I've been on break for a while and I'm hoping to be back to recording videos very soon. I had a little spare time and I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd record a little audio as kind of a way to dip my toe back in, in a sense. Mm. I think I'm going to do a little bit of an update kind of a chit-chat in the beginning part of this audio, and then I'll close it out with a little guided relaxation. I will note in the description box uh, the timestamp for when the guided relaxation begins. So if you just want to skip ahead to that part, that's absolutely fine. No hard feelings. <laughs> this is a relaxation channel primarily, and I know that. So if you're not super interested in the updates right now or ever, that's okay. Um, all right. So again, as many of you know, I've been on break. For a while, um, I posted an update oh, maybe about a week ago or so, and that was just a written update, and I posted that um, everywhere I could think of to post it. I posted it as like a um, community update here on my channel. I posted it on all my social media accounts. So if you haven't seen that and you're looking for a little more information about what's been going on with me, you can check there. Um, I'm pretty sure I made it public on all those accounts, like I posted it on my Patreon account, but as a public post. So you don't need to be subscribed or anything like that. Um, I had mentioned in that update that I wanted to make a video in which I talked in a little more detail about what's been going on with me, and I tried to do that. I even recorded a video, uh, and I don't know, it was just, it was just too much, and it was kind of a bummer. <laughs> um, the very short version of the story is that I've been sick pretty much my whole life uh, with as yet undiagnosed chronic illness. And for some reason, over the past few years, uh, the past, let's say, about two and a half, three years in particular, it's kind of taken a turn for the worse, and it's been really hard. And, uh, like I said, I don't want to talk about it in too much detail because I don't want to uh, make anyone feel like they need to help diagnose me or, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I think the biggest reason that it's hard to talk about it too much is that this is um, a whole series of symptoms and an illness that I've been dealing with for almost my whole life. And while it has been really, really hard at times, uh, I don't want to downplay that. Like I said, it's also, it's a lifetime of symptoms and incidents. Um, so if I tried to talk about it 
in like a 10 minute video or something. It just sounds like a lot. Um, when I listened back to the video I made about it, I was just like, that's heavy. <laughs> that's too much. Um, it sounds really just depressing and overwhelming. And while it can be really challenging at times, it's something that uh, I've learned to live with. And I think anyone with chronic illness or someone who's anyone who's dealt with something that can be really challenging or life disrupting over a very long period of time is that yes it's very hard but um you also kind of find your own baseline or your own normal so uh, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this but I didn't want to stress anyone out too much I didn't want to put too much on you at once so the short version is that I've been sick. Um, I've been sick for a really long time. It's been worse lately. And then, uh, you know, after welcoming our third child to our family, uh, it just kind of got to a point where I, I was having trouble managing, just in general. Um, for so much of my life, I built up all these strategies and methods for living a, you know, healthy, relatively healthy, normal, happy life in spite of my symptoms, you know, I was able to work around it. And then over the past few years, I've just been taking on a lot. Um, you know, I've had, I have three children now, uh, two of which I've had within the past three years. Uh, I started this channel, which I love, but it is a lot of work. So now that I have this channel and I have three children, I just found myself in a point where I needed to stop and reassess all my strategies that I used to make life manageable because I wasn't managing anymore. It was too much. So that's what I've been doing, is I've just kind of been slowing down. Um, I've been taking a lot of time to think and reassess and strategize and figure out ways that I continue can continue to do all the things that I love, which, you know, a big part of that is this channel. I want to be able to manage this channel and really devote myself. I want to make sure that I'm giving the best of myself to my children and my husband and my friends. So, yeah, I've been having some me time. <laughs> Much needed. And it's been going really well. Uh, I also um, found a new doctor recently, and we are hopefully... <laughs> Sorry, I haven't eaten. I apologize if there are a lot of stomach noises, um, but I think we might be making some headway on finally getting me a diagnosis. Um, I know that there's a really strong temptation for people to want to help in situations like this. Oh. <laughs> so if any of you are feeling an instinct to suggest this kind of issue or that kind of issue or you know, this kind of treatment or that kind of treatment. I know unsolicited advice can be a little bit of a sensitive subject, but if it makes you feel good to make suggestions, you're more than welcome to. I promise I'll read them. I always read all the comments on my videos. Uh, I cannot promise that I'll follow up on them or respond to them, and I hope you understand. Um, let's see. So... Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that for now. There's some other stuff going on in my life that has contributed to me being a little overwhelmed. And if you would like to learn more about that, you can uh, read the link I will post to the kind of uh, blog or journal entry that I wrote a week or so ago. The only specifics I will give you, because I have a laundry list of symptoms, um, but one of the most problematic things for me is um, basically whatever's going on with me is causing really severe inflammation throughout my entire body, 
and that's always been a problem my whole life. Um, it's just gotten much worse recently, and over the past few months, uh, my inflammation around my bones and joints, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but it's gotten really severe. So I am having a lot of pain in my body, uh, especially my bones and joints, uh, especially in my hands, my forearms, my legs, and my spine. Um, I know it sounds like I just described my whole body, but there are some areas that are relatively pain-free, you know, my, uh, I don't know, <laughs> my ribs don't hurt, <laughs> my ribs are fine, uh, my, uh, I don't know, the bones around my pelvic girdle <laughs> seem okay, um, but yeah, like, it's, it's very, very painful right now, a lot of the time for me to do things, anything that involves gripping, so, like, opening jars, or, uh, massaging shampoo into my scalp, lifting things, opening things is really hard, which is challenging with three children, because I'm constantly opening, you know, snacks and stuff like that for them, uh, so it's not unbearable, I don't want you to imagine me, you know, sitting here with a tear perpetually falling down my cheek, uh, it's, it's very difficult, but I'm, I'm managing, I'm in a very good place, I think, mentally and emotionally with it, especially because, uh, I have been, hopefully, <laughs> making some headway with this doctor. It's funny, the other day, she sent me for a lot of blood testing, and the, uh, what do you call it, it's a phlebotomist, um, took eight vials of blood from my right arm. And that's never bothered me. Uh, I've always been perfectly fine with needles and shots and blood draws and things like that. Um, but <laughs> she took eight vials from my right arm, and I remember looking at all of them, and it was fine, but I was like, that's a lot of blood. Um, and then uh, she finished that up, and then she was going through some paperwork, and she went, huh. She left the room for a minute, and I could hear her. I couldn't hear exactly what she was saying, but I could hear her having a conversation with the uh, person who had checked me in, and she came back in. She's like, I'm so sorry. You know, there was a mix-up. Um, we forgot a few. <laughs> so then they had to go back in on my left arm and take even a few more. I think it was just two more vials of blood. But uh, on my personal social media later that day, I posted a, a photo of this, like, mummified woman, <laughs> this, you know, ancient mummy, so this completely desiccated woman, and I was like, this is what I feel like right now, because <laughs> I'd been, I'd been fasting for uh, almost 24 hours at that point, and they took all this blood, and I was like, oh, I, I feel like human jerky, there's nothing left to me anymore. <laughs> But I went and I had lunch, and I, I lay down after that, I was fine. So, yes, I've been very sick, I've been in a lot of pain, I have some other stuff going on, but... Um, over that time, it's been nice, because I, I still have notifications turned on for YouTube. Um, which means, you know, whenever someone leaves a comment on one of my videos, or pretty much any time someone leaves a comment on one of my videos, I get a little push notification on my phone so I can see at least the beginning of the comment, uh, as if it were coming through like a little text message. I've known for a long time that I'm going to have to turn that off because, because I've been so blessed and fortunate to have my channel grow as much as it has, uh, the notifications can be a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I'm so grateful that so many people leave comments, um, but a lot of times, especially if a video is new, if I've just published it, I get so many notifications on my phone. Um, and someday I'm going to have to turn off notifications, but I'm just hanging on as long as I can. Um, but over the past few weeks that I haven't been publishing any videos, people are still coming in and commenting occasionally on my older videos and those still come through, and it's such a treat 
in the middle of my day, I'll be doing something else, and I'll see my phone light up, and I'll look down, and it'll be someone saying something usually very simple, but very kind about one of my videos, and I feel so fortunate to have that be a part of my everyday life. So thank you to everyone who leaves comments, even if they're short, even if they're simple, um, and yeah, even if they're on an old video, I still see those. They don't go unread. So, hmm. I've been doing a lot of thinking in the past few weeks. Uh, that can be one of the incredible things about being sick, is uh, so many of us are so busy, and to a degree it's almost like we've kind of glorified or even fetishized busyness in our society. It's a big part of our humor, you know, about how we don't want people to talk to us before we've had our coffee, or, you know, you'll see memes out there that people share where it's like some funny image, and they'll say, this is what it looks like when I'm trying to balance, you know, a job, friends, this thing, that thing, this thing, that thing. So many of us are taking on so much and multitasking so many things to the point where it's been very normalized. Um, life is very fast and very overwhelming. And so many of us are being sort of bombarded every day with input from all directions. And Sometimes there'll be something that happens, maybe. Your phone will break, or you'll lose it, you'll be without it for a few days, or maybe you lose electricity, maybe you get sick. But sometimes things happen that, at first, seem terrible, because they disrupt the flow of our lives. And then sometimes those very things turn out to be positive in many ways. I know how that, that's how it's been for me. I got to my point where I realized that it wasn't even a choice anymore. I realized that I, I had to take a break from this channel for at least a little while. And I took that break and it's, it gave me a lot of chance to slow down. And, you know, I wasn't like sitting by a pond in a lawn chair with a sun hat and a blanket draped over me, just like gazing at the water all day. <laughs> I've still been living my life and getting through, you know, things done. I still have three children and and other stuff going on. But um, just slowing down a little bit has allowed me to think more. And I think that's something a lot of us take for granted, especially if you're like me. Um, because I have issues with OCD and being paranoid and, and as someone who tends to overthink things, my instinct would be that having too much time to think would be a bad thing. When in fact, having more time to think means I can take more time to think. I don't have to be in such a rush to figure things out. And that was a really meaningful and helpful realization for me. That if I slowed down and took more time to think, it didn't lead to overthinking in the way that I thought it would. It allowed me to improve the ways that I think in some small ways. And it's neat because I've had a lot of moments over the past few weeks 
where I've kind of felt like I connected to eat. That's a car near me. That's not you. Don't worry. Um, so I felt like I've been able to connect with a younger version of myself in a lot of ways. Um, there are certainly characteristics or issues that I had when I was younger that I don't wish <laughs> to reconnect with. I have a lot of things that I think I healed from or, you know, I grew up in a healthy way in a lot of ways. Um, there were also qualities I had when I was younger, especially since I'm at that age where, you know, I didn't have my first cell phone until I was probably like 19 or 20 years old. And I think that taking this break and slowing down has allowed me to connect with the me of, you know, 20 years ago in a lot of really healthy ways. I've been thinking about the different ways that we grow as people. I haven't talked about this uh, too much with y'all. But uh, I am married. I'm married to my second husband. Uh, I was married previously. And, uh, you know, for all that we went through in our marriage, good and bad, uh, my first husband and I have still remained pretty close. Uh, my ex-husband and I and my husband now, we're all pretty good friends, and, um, you know, some of that was through necessity, because my oldest child, um, I had him with my first husband, so we're all very much a family, and we, you know, will be forever, because we've worked very hard to prioritize the children, and um, I think maybe if we hadn't had to work towards that, we might have drifted apart. But because uh, my ex and I and my current husband, Mr. Green, um, because we all really prioritized um, putting the needs of our children ahead of our own egos and issues uh, and worked very hard at it and continue to work at it, we've been able to uh, have a very good relationship with our sort of non-traditional extended family. And it's one of those things where everyone has to work at it, you know? Uh, if any one of the three of us wasn't pulling their weight, it wouldn't work. But uh, we all work at it, and I'm very grateful for that. But anyway, I just felt like I had to kind of clarify that before I start talking about <laughs> talking to my ex, because that sounds potentially very dramatic if you don't know the background. Um, but I was speaking with uh, my ex-husband the other day, and, you know, we've, we've been separated or divorced for a few years now, and we've, we've started to get to a point where we can comfortably talk through some of the issues that we had from our marriage. Um, a lot of that stuff was too painful to really discuss, for me at least, for quite a while after we split up. But I think we're getting to a point of healing by now that we can talk about it with some perspective and kind of discuss it objectively instead of, you know, all the hurt just kind of rushing back. So we've been having some good conversations lately, which is nice. And we were talking about how and if people change. And I know that's kind of a controversial topic. There are people who depend very much on the idea that people can change. And then there are other people who insist that people can't change, not really, that deep down inside we're always the same person. And I think 
like with just about anything else. It's a little bit of both. And I, while speaking with him, I compared it to um, exercise, to physical training. Uh, my ex-husband is, I don't know, he'd say kind of a gym rat, I guess. <laughs> he works out a lot. Um, and he's very much into, uh, you know, I don't know if bodybuilding necessarily, but <laughs> I just don't know all the terminology for exercise. I enjoy exercise, but I'm more of a light exerciser. Like, I love to walk and do yoga, things like that. But yes, so just because this was a, I guess, a comparison that he could grip onto, I, I compared it to that. I said that I think that inside, with our mind and our hearts and our behaviors, uh, we're very much like we are on the outside. That we can change. We can change significantly. I'm sure we've all seen instances of people who have made such dramatic physical changes that they are almost unrecognizable. Um, maybe they've lost an exceptional amount of weight. Maybe they've gained a lot of weight. Um, maybe they're, they've <laughs> shaved their face, grown out their hair, um, had some sort of surgery, there are so many different ways that we can adopt significant, <laughs> significant physical change. And I like using exercising as an example. Someone can exercise regularly for a very long time and they can look and or feel dramatically different. I know that I'll go through stages of not being very physically active and then I'll get back into it and even if I'm just taking a nice long walk every day, after a few months I feel like a different person. It's like having a different body because of the way it works, because of the way it feels. So our bodies can absolutely change. They can become, you know, they can just look physically different. They can feel physically different. But it's still the same body, you know? Uh, I hope he doesn't mind me talking about him like this. But my ex, for example, uh, he you know, went through a long period where he was not physically active and, um, you know, gained quite a bit of weight and I know he wasn't feeling great in a lot of different ways physically. He just wasn't feeling good and he wasn't happy with the way that he looked. And then he got back into exercise very regularly, which is something he had enjoyed in the past. And, you know, if you looked at before and after pictures, he looks dramatically different. It would be silly for anyone to say, you know, oh, his body is exactly the same. Because it's not. It's changed a lot. He's worked hard on it. Um, but it's still the same body. It's still him. It's still the same body that, you know, essentially he was born with. And I think we're the same. I think that we're always the same person. Always, always. I think there is a core to us that we are born with and that we carry through life. And it can change in many ways. Um, it can manifest in different ways. It can express itself in many different ways. Um, 
if we, you know, have a great braveness at our core that can express itself as being reckless or adventurous, or maybe both. But no matter how it expresses itself, you can get back to the core and it's the same person. So yes, I think we're all capable of change. I think everyone is. And I don't think at their core, anyone is inherently good or bad. I think we have raw materials. I think we have raw materials, strong qualities, sort of for us to build from. And I think through all sorts of things, you know, nature and nurture, the things we choose, the things that happen to us, we express our core being in different ways. And I think that we can change. If at your core, for example, you are very, very emotionally sensitive, at your core, you're very, very emotionally sensitive, that can manifest itself as walking through life like a very wounded person. And a lot of people consider themselves sensitive or empaths or other versions of that. Um, And depending on what happens to us and depending on the choices we make, a lot of those people walk around like kind of an open wound. I know I have for many parts of my life. And when you're walking around as kind of an open wound, you might be mistrustful, you might be angry, you might be scared. It might be very difficult to live a fulfilling life if you are constantly in pain and worried about more pain. Alternately, depending on many factors, some of which we can control, some we can't, People who are at their sensitive, at their center, <laughs> deeply sensitive, can be very empathetic. And I believe very much that deep empathy is a kind of superpower. It allows us to see other people and to help other people in ways that we would never be capable of if we didn't have that deep sensitivity at our core. So, while it's easier for some people than for others, for many different reasons, I believe that, for example, People who have a deep sensitivity at their core can guide themselves to manifest that in such a way that it feels like a net positive, you know? And then there are also ways that that deep sensitivity can manifest itself as a net negative. We hurt more than we help. We feel hurt more than we feel like we're doing good in this world or experiencing good in this world. I don't want to make any statements about 
the amount of effort that it takes to do that kind of work, to make our core being express itself with net positives, because I think that's different for everyone. I don't know your story, only you do. And if it's feeling nearly impossible to achieve a net positive, then maybe it is, maybe it is nearly impossible, maybe it is extraordinarily hard. I don't want this to come across like I'm trying to tell any of you that, you know, you should feel ashamed (laughs) or lazy if you're not able to do that, because it's hard. In the same way that some people physically, to bring it back to the exercise comparison, Um, Some people are just built in such a way that it's relatively easy for them to exercise and get the physical results that they want. To be, you know, big and muscly or lean and fast or (laughs) just to be comfortable and energetic whatever it is that your goal is. And then some people were dealt a hand of cards, physiologically or anatomically, I guess. guess. Um, They were dealt a hand of cards that makes it much, much harder for them to achieve the physical results that they'd like. And again, internally, in our minds and in our hearts, Some things are easier for us to achieve and some things are harder. We're all different. And I think there are many people out there who can help us strategize when it comes to identifying who we are at our core, which ways we're unique, maybe some ways that we're not unique, but thought we were, (laughs) which can be kind of a downer or can be comforting, depending on which angle you're coming from. So there are a lot of people who can guide us in that. There are some people who that's their job, you know, therapists or um, people who write self-help books, things like that. People who make videos like this, I guess. But ultimately... The only people who can know for sure, the only person who can know for sure is you, who you are at your core. I think there's a lot of temptation to require confirmation of that from someone else. And honestly, I don't think that's necessary or entirely possible. I think that if you think that there's something special about you, something about your, you at your core that you really like, if there's something in there that you want to believe is true about yourself and your instincts tell you that it's true, there's a lot of temptation to find someone, whether it's a romantic partner who will see how special we are, or a friend who will see us for who we really are, or a therapist who is, you know, trained to see us more objectively and in a more skillful way than other people. Um, There's this incredible temptation to feel like we need confirmation from them. And all of those people can be invaluable guides Absolutely. The objective opinion of other people who observe us can be incredibly helpful if we know how to listen to it and how to evaluate it. That's why I've never fully agreed with 
the thing that people say when they say, uh, you know, who cares what other people think of you? Or don't listen to what other people have to say about you. Um, you know, which there is some value in that advice for sure, but I think it's not as simple as that. I think the criticism that we get from other people, positive or negative, can be very, very helpful. Other people can guide us. Whether they're helpful in giving us advice, like, you know, I said a therapist or a friend or lover. And then there are other people who can guide us. It might be someone you're arguing with on Facebook over a political issue. <laughs> someone who's saying things that at your core you know are not true. And those people in my life have been some of my very best guides. The people who say things that I vehemently disagree with because in my response to them, whether I'm actually, you know, writing to them or responding to them or whether I'm just having that sort of on the drive home inner imaginary conversation with them <laughs> that I know a lot of people have. I should have said this. I should have said that. Um, I think that that's where I've gotten some of my best insights into things that I think are true, no matter what it's about. People who I disagree with, they can say some of the most infuriating things. And as I'm working through that in my head and saying, this is why I disagree with that. This is why that's wrong. This is why I don't like that. This is why that makes me feel bad. In doing that, I have sort of cultured or developed some very strong observations or truths that I feel about life. So, I guess where I was going with that when I started was that I think it's wonderful to seek guidance um, for many people. I think it's essentially necessary. I think that getting the viewpoint of someone who can see us differently than we do is almost always going to be at least a little health helpful for almost everyone. Um, however, ultimately, I don't think that any other person can kind of put the stamp of truth on anything about ourselves other than ourselves. So if you want to seek that guidance about your core and your core being, then uh, go for it. You know, seek it in whichever places you'd like, as many places as you'd like. But I think so many people feel a very deep longing to have someone else tell them the thing that they want to believe about themselves. There's a really great quote by Ram Das, and I'm not going to be able to remember it off the top of my head. But it's something along the lines of like, the part of you that hears me is the part of you that is me. And it's kind of how I look at horoscopes. I don't read them very often, you know, astrology type things. But when I do, I kind of look at them from that angle. I think when we see things like that, whether it's a horoscope or a tarot reading or something sort of uh, mystical like that, um, often people will sort of gravitate towards the things that they recognize that feel true. Be like, oh yeah, that is me. And they'll just sort of dismiss the things that don't feel true. 
And that's because even though we're reading something external that's telling us things about ourselves, it's ultimately us. The stuff that we're really hearing is the stuff that we already inside know is true. So, I guess I want to encourage you all to to allow yourselves to have that authority over yourself. If you are longing for someone to tell you something about yourself that you want to be told because you feel it's true but you feel like you need to hear it from someone else, I just want to encourage you to allow yourself to give yourself that confirmation. It might be great to hear it from someone else, but you can kind of put that stamp on yourself. Approved. Accurate. (laughs) That thing about yourself that you want to believe. It's true. Just tell yourself that. If you're hearing it from me or from anyone else, it can't be any more true coming from someone else than it can be from you. You are the ultimate authority of yourself. So go ahead. You're good. You're smart. You're strong. You're resilient. You're kind. Any of these things that you're hearing from me that strike a chord with you, any of the things that you've been longing to hear from someone else so that you can believe that they're true, guess what? You can just believe that they're true. You're allowed. (laughs) So. I do believe that we all have a core being. And I don't believe that it's inherently good or bad. And I believe that every core quality that we have can be manifested for good or for bad. I say something like that about my children a lot. And I think those of you who have spent a lot of time with children can see that. How children will have certain qualities and they can come out in a constructive way or they can come out in a destructive way. I think anyone who's spent a lot of time with children can also tell you that it's pretty much futile to try and just stop a child from being a certain way. If a child is really, really, really stubborn, for example, I've never heard or seen of it working to just get them to stop being stubborn. You gotta go back to the core of that, what the core value is, and find a better way for them to express that. My two oldest children have shown so many signs of stubbornness. But we go back to that persistence at their core and we do everything we can to help them to express that instead as persistence, as tenaciousness. Because there are so many things that that can be an incredible, beautiful quality in people. And there are many ways that, you know, that uh, persistence and that stubbornness can express itself in destructive ways too. Yeah. So we gotta go back to the core. Find the core of our behaviors that we like, our behaviors that we don't like, and figure out a better way of channeling those.
or if we're already channeling them in a good way, figure out how to stick with that. <laughs> we can change. And while other people can help us to see our core, ultimately no one is going to be able to see your core as well as you can. And they can help you, but you don't require their authority. You can look to them for guidance, but you can't... You can't get confirmation of that truth from anyone other than yourself. And you're allowed to do. <laughs> Not many of us are a thorough authority on many things. <laughs> Most of us know a little bit about a lot of things. And then some of us know a lot about a few things. But the only ultimate authority on you is you. Okay. Thank you for letting me talk to you about that. I don't socialize as much as I think I would like to. To some degree, I've always been kind of a solitary person, and that I enjoy quite a lot of time to myself. It's not because I don't like other people, I just enjoy my own company. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of sensitivity issues. I get very overwhelmed when I have too much contact out in the world or with other people. So, Knowing that you're out there listening to this is very comforting for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'm going to lean back and try to uh, <laughs> get my mouth to be a little bit less dry here. I'm on a lot of medications right now, new medications, including a lot of stuff like anti-inflammatory stuff, and it's making me, it's giving me dry mouth a lot. So I apologize if that's been bothering you at all. <laughs> I don't even like to mention stuff like that, because I know that maybe if you didn't notice it before, you'll start to notice it now. where you feel comfortable and supported. Try to check in with your senses and that'll help you be present in your body. If your mind's kind of floating away like a balloon touch the top of your head and it's kind of bobbing all around <laughs> in the wind up there. You can bring it back down to stay in your body for a little while, calm and focused, by becoming really aware of your body. There's an exercise for this that I don't know that well off the top of my head, but I'll give it a try. I want you to think of three things that you can feel. Examples of that might be, let's see, I have a, I'm barefoot at the moment and I'm sitting in a carpeted room so I can feel the carpet beneath my feet. I can feel the um, sitting on a metal stool kind of thing here. So I can feel kind of that firm coolness against my backside and the 
back of my legs to the top here. I have a very soft, light uh, bamboo and cotton blanket draped over my shoulders at the moment, so I can feel that. It's very subtle, but I can feel the air in the room against my face. I can feel my hair brushing against my cheek. My hair's up in a little half ponytail right now, and I can feel the pressure of that. Go ahead. Find three things you can feel right now. Now, find three things you can see. If your eyes are closed right now, maybe that's the back of your eyelids in the darkness. If your eyes are open, just pick a couple things. You can see. Good. Perfect. Pick three things that you can hear. Even if it's just three different types of silence. Any three things that you can hear. Three things that you can smell. and three things that you can taste. And again, some of these might be very subtle. Just give it a try. Taste the air around you. Taste the roof of your mouth. <laughs> Maybe lift up your hand and give the skin on the back of your hand a little lick. <laughs> what does that taste like? yourself to be present in your body. Now that I've possibly guided you to look yourself, <laughs> we're just going to take a few deep breaths. I want you to do these at your own pace. I'll guide you, but if it's not comfortable for any reason, that's fine. You can do faster or slower. I like to breathe in through my nose, not through my mouth, but again, you can do it slightly differently if you prefer. We're going to breathe in, hold, you hear that plane going overhead, and breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. Again. Breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. I'd like you to continue to breathe deeply and purposefully at your own pace at a steady rate. Good. And we're just gonna do a quick scan of your body. You don't have to relax anything. I just want you to be aware. Sometimes just being in our bodies is enough to help us relax. Your toes, your feet, how do they feel? Are they pressing up against anything? Can you feel any sensations of the floor against your feet or against your heels, maybe if you're lying down? If you're wearing shoes, how do your shoes feel on your feet? Good. And moving up your legs, your lower legs, your knees, and your thighs. How do they? 
they feel? Are they tense? Relaxed? Does anything hurt? Does anything feel wonderful? Is there any type of fabric touching them? And how does that feel? Move to your buttocks and your hips and your pelvic area. Any pressure there? Any sensations? If you're sitting or lying down, you may feel some pressure on your buttocks from whatever you're sitting or lying down on. Moving up your back, from the base of your back, up, 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 your spine to around your shoulders. How does it feel? Does anything hurt? Does anything feel really nice? Your muscles loose or tense? Is your spine kind of arched and hyperextended? Is it kind of crumpled and slouched? Is it lifted but relaxed? Let's check in with your shoulders. Are they quite high? Are they low and relaxed? In the middle? How about your arms? Moving your awareness down your arms, to your elbows, your forearms, the palms of your hands, the backs of your hands and your fingers. You kind of shake or wiggle them a little bit if you like. How do they feel? Are they cool or warm? How about your neck? Back of your neck, the front of your throat. How do they feel? Is your neck long and extended? Or is it kind of crumpled and slouched? Is it leaning to one way or the other? A lot of us have some stiffness or some pain in our necks. How about you? How does your neck feel? How moving your awareness up from the base of your skull at the top of your neck, up, up, over your head. How does your scalp feel? Does anything on your scalp feel unpleasant? Does anything on your scalp feel pretty good? How about your ears? And your face? Your chin, your mouth and your cheeks, are they relaxed, are they tense, your nose, your eyes, your eyebrows, your forehead, good. That's perfect. Do a quick check-in. From the top of your head to the tips of your toes, how do you feel? Do you feel a little more aware? A little more present? 
I hope so. I hope you feel good. I hope you feel well. I hope you feel aware to some extent of how extraordinary your body is. It's very easy to focus on all the things that are wrong with our body, whether they're just little things, whether they're big things, maybe you're sick and in pain all the time, which is very difficult, maybe there are little things that are bothering you here and there, maybe things, there are things we just don't like about our body from an aesthetic point of view, it's easy to focus on all those things easy to be very aware of them. It's also very easy to forget that all the amazing things our bodies do to keep us alive. <laughs> Just a few minutes in a physiology class will blow your mind. For every little thing that goes wrong with our bodies, big or small, thousands of things that are going right. Our body is working so hard to keep us supported and well. To help us live the kind of lives that we want to live. So I want to offer you deep compassion for any of your body's struggles, whether it's pain, discomfort, sickness, something to do with your appearance, if you're not happy with your level of mobility. I don't want to dismiss any of that. I do want to extend a little love to your body for all the things it gets right every day. All the things it does to keep you alive and thriving. And I'd like to encourage you to give your body a little love too. Do something nice for it. You can just give yourself a hug, wrap your arms around yourself and squeeze. You can take a nap, rest, you can go for a walk, perhaps, for those of you who can. Just something that you know would make your body feel good in a healthy way. <laughs> Do that for yourself. You've earned it. Thank you again so much for joining me here today. Knowing you're listening means the world to me. I hope that I've been able to make you feel just a little bit, at least, a little bit cared for, loved, and special. You all are very good at making me feel cared for and loved and special. So, I hope I can return the favor. Thank you, and I'll see you again soon.